so I have the cage wire back to the garage now, so we'll get it set up and I'll show you how I build them. So today we're going to be making this cage with one inch, 14 gauge galvanized cage wire. Um, this may be 16 gauge. I think it might be 16 gauge, so, but that'll suffice, it's gonna work just fine. Uh, we've used one inch by one inch for the tops, but traditionally it's not used for the sides, but this is, this is I like it because it'll help with kits, and because um, one inch by two inch, sometimes the kits can squeeze through that, even one inch by one inch, you know, for the first couple days, they possibly could squeeze through it, but really once you get past a couple days, um, they're big enough, they really gain weight fast. So, but uh, we're gonna build it with one inch instead of a traditional one inch by two inch. So I'm laying out my half inch by one inch cage floor bottom cage wire. This comes in 30 inch rolls, as you can see. So I have to cut the 36 inch length. It's only one cut. You can see my glyphosate concentrate is helping me weigh down the roll so I can make a cut. I use a 2x3 just to get the blade away from the ground. I also use it to help me hold the cage wire down, but really a 2x6 or a heavier board like a 4x4 is going to be ideal to help hold the cage wire down. So our cage wire comes in 36 inch rolls. So first we're going to cut our cage floor bottom we'll lay it down on the concrete and as you can see we're using our angle grinder and I'll link this stuff down below so you can uh, you don't have to search for it there's no extra charge for those links it's all free but first cut your sides at 18 inches so you'll have an 18 inch by 36 inch side piece and you'll just lay it right next to the cage floor bottom so after your first cut, you'll have all those little wires. You'll have to cut all that off so you'll have a nice clean edge. And then just simply make the same cut 18 inches by 36 inches and lay that down next to the cage floor bottom. So now the, the long sides are done. For the 30 inch sides, you're going to need to cut those again at 18 inches. And then the 18 by 36 inch, you'll need to cut down to 30 inch. So the sides will be 18 inch by 30 inches. So once all your sides are done, you lay them out and now you just have to piece them together. And once you make your way around and piece the cage floor bottom to all the sides, you simply can start folding them up and connecting the corners. And it's really starting to take shape now. This doesn't take long at all. This video was going to be 45 minutes if I didn't put this into a time lapse. So playing this about 20 times speed. Finally, we're going to put the top on, which is 30 by 36 inches. We just had to make one cut at 30 inches and then we'll make our way around the cage floor. I'm sorry, cage top and connect it all. So our door openings need to be 12 inch by 12 inch. We raise medium breed New Zealand rabbits and the nesting boxes are right around 11 inches. So that will allow enough space where you can get the rabbits in and out easily. You can put your nesting boxes and hide boxes in there. Of course, it's best to double check your hutch setup and make sure you're allowing enough room for the doors to swing open. Our cages sit on a two by three support system. So we have to make sure that our door is a little higher. That way your door can open freely and there's no obstructions. So right now I'm just marking the door just to make sure I cut inside the line and I get everything correct. Once I cut the hole, I'll have to cut a door a little bit bigger than the opening. That way when it closes, it will be able to push up against the cage side and it, it won't swing. You don't want like a saloon door. You're actually going to take the door and connect the hinges on one of the sides. You're going to have to have a designated swing, so just be sure 
to look at your hutch and that way you know which way your door will swing best, right swing or left swing. We're just using traditional J-clip pliers. You can buy these for right around 15 bucks, um, under $20, and you can buy either a small bag of J-clips for seven or eight bucks, or you can buy five pounds for about $25, something like that, right around there. So we're taking the door and we're connecting it to one side so it swings. We use an old coffee can to hold our J-clip pliers as well as all of our J-clips. So now we're adding our latch and you can buy these latches. I think this is right around 12 gauge wire. They're really tough. You can actually make them if you just buy a roll of uh, say 14 gauge wire. So then at the end of it you can see that I am, um, here comes Rachel. I'm just cleaning up all those little wires so I don't pop a tire in my, my tractor or anything like that. So, so the cage is complete and now I just have to go around and put any J clips on that I, that I missed. I actually had to go back even when I thought I was done and I put a couple more on. This build should take you right around 30 minutes or less. So that's pretty much our cage build. It's really important to put the door opening in the middle. You wanna make sure it's at least 12 inches. That way you can get your hide boxes and a medium sized New Zealand rabbit in there. Depending on your cage touch, you may need to cut openings for your trays and your J feeders, but um, we'll go ahead and, and do that later. Just wanted to share with you our really simple way to actually build the cage quickly and make sure that it's dimensional where it doesn't have that saggy bottom. If you guys are experiencing a saggy bottom to your cage floor bottoms, uh, that bowl type of bottom, be sure to cut your, your cage floor bottom a little bit smaller. It needs to be exactly 30 by 36 or 30 by 30 dimension. So. But thanks so much for watching. Please leave all your comments and questions below. I'll answer everybody, and we'll see you on the next video.